So, why the gloomy face? Why the expressions? Like, you know, like, uh, uh, I was reminded of uh, Achilles when in the voyages of Odysseus, when you read the original, <laughs> actually I read the translation from Greek, it, it always said that Achilles was looking slanted up, up ways. So like, eh, that's not looking up like that. So whenever they come see last Achilles, his opinion of like, okay, how do we attack Troy? What will be the next thing to do? And then he would just go there. And that meant that, that, that meant that he is pretty close to cracking and just breaking the neck of the person who asked him. So I, I'm kind of like doing that, but uh, uh, don't don't uh, get me the wrong way because I don't want to, to do anything that to anyone, but uh, this video might be interpreted as uh, not the most endorsing videos ever that was ever done on the planet of the history. I mean, history of the planet, at least the history of mankind on the planet. And I'm just constantly watching, like, you know, upwards. And I have this strange format, tight picture, black and white. <sighs> let's look at it. Okay, let's just, I, I, I kind of like uh, bursted the surprise. <laughs> So Ramsey asked me something special and, and I, I really lo love uh, Ramsey's questions because uh, he's been here with, with the channel from the beginning and, and he is my number one question asker and uh, he has asked by far the most questions on the channel and, and I really want to answer all of his questions and, uh, and it is time for, for a video answer. And, and he is asking about, tell us about the technology used in building the MBL-101X Stream Omnidirectional Speaker. There are some videos talking about it, but they are not enough to explain everything. And um, let's have a look at it. And uh, this is how it looks like, like some uh, extreme uh, cyberpunk uh, uh, loudspeakers or cy cyberpunk system from the future really futuristic and, and what's going on here and um, in the beginning as a disclaimer I have to add that I, I never heard these speakers live so I cannot give any comments as to their sound or, or how well it is applied uh, but I can share the impression of a really close audio body of mine. And as you guys know, I have the Altec based system here. That's, that's what really this channel is about. And, uh, and this body, he has a JBL based system and, uh, he lived here on the island for several years. And then he moved back to Australia. And, and now I have an Altec system. He has a JBL system, but we constantly exchange ideas and experiences. And, uh, and on the way uh, home during one of his travels, I think in Hong Kong, he, he, he heard this MBL setup. Uh, maybe not the exact same, but one similar, driven by real to real. And, and he had really high expectations. He really want, went into the showroom just because they had it. And, and with real to real, so he thought he is going to be just really blown away. And, uh, and he was disappointed. He said it, it didn't sound bad, but he just expected so much more that he didn't get. Um, and I was asking him, what did you did not like about the sound? And it's, it's like, I don't, don't even want to talk about it. It was just disappointing. And um, I find that really sad. Uh, uh, anyway, so now not every, uh, everything we, we read about things, uh, 
is as uh, it's advertised and uh, I am pretty sure that there is potential in this uh, driver technology uh, and it's uh, sold at an extreme price uh, there's probably something in it and uh, and I don't want to demean it in any way possible uh, but um, if you have something like like uh, like a Spandor BC1 modified like the way that Frank described it uh, or, or you have um, like a, a nice voice of the theater or any other Artex speaker mm, changing to to this system might not feel as an upgrade so so I think uh, uh, money is really not everything everything in stereo and uh, and um, and it's not not even a sour grapes thing because if you just you know the sound is is what it is and i think this system is more for you if, if you want something like okay i i really need a steampunk system and and uh, and there's no limit how much i can spend on it then then just for for the view just for the uh, visuals this is this really i don't think you can go <laughs> beyond that unless you want that those ferengi speakers for five million dollars it i i don't know i think you guys must have seen those uh they look like a ferengi nightmare and and the cabinet is made of solid gold and and it's sold for five million dollars and it's a bookshelf speaker so <laughs> I thought it was like a, a kind of a, a, a joke, but it, it was not. Turned out it, it's a real thing. Uh, anyway, uh, you give, uh, you get far more for far less money in this case. But, but really, what Edward wants to know about is how does this thing work? And actually, I had to uh, go and look into it. What, what, what are we getting here? Because you see. This is one channel, so so that's one part of the speaker, and that's the other part. So this here is is a regular tower. It's it's, it's like a, a big subwoofer, and and here this is the mid range, like the top high frequency in the center, and and the mid range, and bass, and the whole thing is mirrored. So like like this is like one section of the thing. And it's been flipped upside down, and and one more of it, so it's it's doubled up. So it's like basically two complements of drivers working together to create uh, one channel. And then when we go down, da 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 no 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 no. Okay okay okay. Here here we are. Technical specifications. So it says four-way omnidirectional loudspeaker with separate subwoofer tower and M ambience tweeter okay no 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 this thing it doesn't really gel with me like omnidirectional loudspeaker that has an ambience tweeter <sighs> It doesn't compute. If it's omnidirectional, why does it need an ambience tweeter? Maybe I'm missing something here. I don't know. So drivers per speaker side. So there are two woofers, two mid-range, two tweeters, one ambience dome tweeter. So what this means? So so these things the radial drivers are those uh, onion peel shaped thingies that we see and those are these uh, ambia ambias creations this is like a very different driver technology than than what we use for cones or anything else and the ambience dome tweeter that that's that's a dome tweeter that's a, a conventional thing and six 12 inch aluminum sub cone subwoofers so those are like regular drivers again so basically we have regular cone subwoofers 12 inch subs and we have a dome tweeter and sandwiched in between we have these uh these onion peel looking thingies that make the sound from from 
from uh, Twitter through Woofer. And connectivity options for active subwoofer, frequency response 20 Hz through 40 kHz, sensitivity. Okay, now, now I, I kind of like had to just uh, pause here again 88 db per 2.8 volts so basically we are getting the bs uh, scale which won't tell you how many watts you need to drive this thing per 2 pi okay so now they they have their own formula for sensitivity which means squat for you because it's in not in a net expressed in units that you can relate to so kind of like uh, what is your weight 15 orange peels what does that even mean so when you create your own uh, unit of measurement then uh, it's completely meaningless it's it's two numbers like two pi i guess it's like two pi space but the, the sensitivity rating uh, what per meter half meter or, or, or what what, what what are we thinking about i know they they are uh, it's it's when when you have an omnidirectional speaker it's uh, sensitivity and uh, efficiency is kind of work very differently than than a directional loudspeaker uh, for an omnidirectional speaker the the sensitivity may be way lower than for a directive speaker yet at the same time it will load your room better so but still i don't know why they said that if like ohm wash and and others uh, who make omnidirectional speakers can use the the standard measurements i don't understand why they have to create their own i guess for two hundred thousand uh, dollars yeah you, you can expect that they come up with their own measurements of course it has to be uh you know we cannot compare to an own wash you know that's just pedestrians right spl 111 db again what at at a millimeter meter foot four feet I, I don't know i don't know uh, so so here we get like a, a meaningless scale also frequency response within how many dbs so so basically we are getting a bunch of numbers but um, we can make head or tail of anything and uh, we, we we don't get the uh, impedance of the speaker so so this number even if this was related to per meter even then wouldn't mean anything because we we can't calculate anything out of it as we don't know the impedance of the speaker and when we go down it says the about the weight about the the price about the dim dimensions and finishes how many colors you can choose which is awesome yeah i don't, I don't say it's a bad thing but um really it doesn't give us enough technical details to 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 find out anything and when when you go to mbl's website uh here we have a, a design it shows us what the what is this doing here and uh, this is how or maybe here you can see it even better so basically what happens that there's like a rod in the center that supports the structure supports the column and then the top here this is a base plate or how do they call it fixing point they call it a fixing point a center rod and they call these things which are like the skins or uh, like potato peels or, or onion skins or or apple rind surfaces they are attached on one end to that fix, fixing point and in the bottom they are also attached to to another fixing point uh, but which is actually uh, a voice coil magnet with moving coil so this is actually a driver so that when you have a, a, a loudspeaker driver that is also a magnet with a moving coil so basically you have a, a loudspeaker driver but it doesn't drive a cone it drives these lamellae so when we look here uh where is it here so these things you see there 
these these rinds, these 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 slivers, those are the lamellae. So I'm not sure what material they use, like mylar or, or some really um, metallized plastic or something like that. And uh, so how this thing works is that these these uh, lamellae, these uh, these slivers, which which are light material, and they form like like a bub balloon shape. On the top, they are fixed to the top, and in the bottom, they are attached to basically a loudspeaker voice coil. And that loudspeaker voice coil pushes them up or, or pulls them down. And when it pushes up, then basically you have these lamellae, like, like this, and when it's pushed up, then the whole thing is squeezed together and moves out. And when it pulls it back, then it, it, it thins down. Pulls, push pull push pull and and as this is happening when you have this thing happening then it moves the air in the front right and when it goes back it pulls the air pulls pull pull pull, pull. so that's how it works by this push squeeze push squeeze like push squeeze pull and and so these lamellae are doing the same thing that i just did with my cheeks so that's how it works. And then these pulsating movements, that's what creates uh, the, the air, air pressure fluctuations. And, and because this, this push-pull is uh, the squeezing, it's, it's, happen it's uh, like towards uh, happening everywhere, not just to the front, like a loudspeaker cone, but, but every direction, because these lamellae that you see up here, they continue in 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 a in a in a globe like fashion they are all around so basically they emanate the sound in a torus it's it's kind of like, like a donut shape so so the sound waves propagate from this uh, lamellic inner structure in in a in a in a donut shape that's how it uh, extends into the room and and that's why they call it omnidirectional because in every direction it, it just expands the same way of course if you have a longer lamellae it can uh, be used to radiate lower frequency sound and when you have shorter lamellae that radiates higher frequency sound and even shorter even higher frequency sound and we can see this right here oh oh wait 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 uh here so you see, they have the big ones here. The, they emit the bass frequencies, which unspecified. What is bass in, in their regards? What, uh, in which fre frequencies? Uh, when, when they don't specify it, maybe they mean like 200 hertz to a kilohertz? I don't know. What's their definition of bass? They never specified it. I don't know what sort of frequencies are supported by these. And uh, and I guess it it probably doesn't reach too low because uh, because there is I think only very little excursion is allowed by uh, by by these uh, devices so so I think the limitation of the big limitations here is that you are not allowed like a big expansion for these lamellae and big contractions so that there. Relatively, are much more gentle and benign creatures than those big cones that we have, and that's why for the base, for the subwoofer, they have like twelve uh, or, or what was that six, six twelve-inch woofers. Like they rely on the cone technology. It's just as you see, any kind of technology uh, called Im improvements that we have. Ultimately, for the base, we just have to rely on the old cone, and. Uh, you see here they they call this the fixing point but also this up here that's the fixing point of these lamellae which they call as the mid-range and and there's the fixing point for those which are called the tweeter and um, actually what i suspect really is that these lamellae work at those frequencies which corresponds to the size of the lamella and maybe like a couple of times lo longer sound waves because uh, they they are just not efficient of driving anything lower than that 
you that's just laws of physics so i would say probably they work down to about maybe 100 hertz at best i wouldn't say and any any lower than 100 hertz so 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 the subwoofer i suspect is probably uh taking over around 100 hertz maybe uh, maybe a little lower than that but i wouldn't be surprised if if, if higher than that um and uh and let's see mm. what do they have yeah, yeah yeah here it says the same thing every radial Stahler chassis so 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 one unit like this is called radial Stahler chassis and individual petal like segments these are these lamellae which are arranged in a circle around the central axis resulting in an elongated spherical shape so it's not a perfect loop but an elongated shape which will be more optimal of uh, producing these sound waves because if it's if it's if it would be a perfect globe when you squeeze it then uh, uh, that one would uh, radiate much less energy to the sides when you have these elongated shapes then uh, much more of the surfaces is going to travel towards you outside and out in every direction so this is more the most efficient way of using this technology rather than having a perfect balloon shape and each individual lamella is permanently fixed at its upper end attached to a voice coil at the lower end moving freely in and out of the magnetized gap so so basic as i said this whole thing like travels up back up back up back up back and uh, something like that um so i think it, it's a great idea what what i think might be the uh, the problem with it and why it is so inefficient is because when you look at it i'm not sure can I, can we see that so so what you see is that there are these lamellae and and there is space between them i'm not sure what that space is Do, does it look like some plastic filling between them because when it when this whole thing is moving up it means that as the lamella goes out uh and and it's pushing air out but between the lamella as, as that space is open up so so as as, as they're squeezed together the space opens up between the lamella more and more and and where do you have the opening there the air wants to go backwards so so it's like we are pushing the air out with the lamellae but between the lamellae then we are creating a vacuum so so in inside the body uh inside these lamellae inside the lemon when when you squeeze it together as as you push out the sides you you create a vacuum on the inside and um and and i think there we are losing a lot of the efficiency and and like smaller turbulences which occur at a much higher frequency than where the drivers are working um and but this turbulence like causes a lot of uh, loss probably and uh and also prevents these to work higher than uh than they could theoretically if if the lamellas were not separate so that's why they they need really these uh different sizes like three different sizes of these uh, uh lamellar structures to work together but what i don't understand at all is is why do they need an additional tweeter on top of all of that I suspect that that because the tweeter compartment probably goes down only goes up maybe to like not even 20 kilohertz maybe 20 and as you said you as you read it has like an extension to 40 kilohertz so 
they maybe just put in that DOM tweeter too, so they can put it on the spec sheet that it goes up to 40 kilohertz. That, that would be the better case. The worst case is if these, the smallest lamellar piece goes up to 40 kilohertz, but it has directivity issues and that's why they add the uh, top piece to, to compensate for, for those frequencies. So to me, that, that sounds like an Achilles heel, that, that an omnidirectional speaker needs the help of a dome tweeter for to to be omnidirectional, um, that doesn't really compute. Uh, maybe maybe what they what they are doing maybe if the tweeter is right or dome tweeter is right on the very top, and they beam it up to the ceiling. Maybe that 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 can be a valid scenario. I don't know. They don't mention where the tweeter is, but if it's up there then yeah that that could be a good idea because these lamellae they they create the sound in a torus shape so it it just extends uh in 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 the horizontal plane and 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 up the ceiling there's no uh signal going directly up so even though it's called omnidirectional but it's uh, it, it's every direction but it's not not a point source so it's not like a point and extending in in the space everywhere no is just expanding in in a horizontal layer and then as a torus expands but there's nothing going straight up so i think maybe that's why they are adding that that extra dome tweeter to compensate that region where there's nothing happening and um and it could be something but uh, i would rather have welcome they put an additional torus up there so that that compensates for the high frequencies. And uh, I, I think for this price they are asking for, they could have easily just added an additional little torus on the top and, and to make it like truly uh, omnidirectional, truly ambient tweeter. So that's kind of like a, a one disappointment that I really wanted to see something better done there. But anyway, I think they they probably done like a crazy amount of uh, uh, tweaking about it and experimentation and development. It's not not like a, okay, I'm building another two way loudspeaker and just trying out different cones and cross store and pff, what it. But but they really created something truly original. At least that's what I think. I don't know the history of the company. I don't know who came up with the idea. Is it their idea? Do they take it from someone? Because uh, it's so often you can see it in the history of audio, not just audio, everywhere in science, especially in science, that when someone has an idea, usually a postdoc or a student, and then his boss or boss's boss just takes it and then gets the Nobel Prize for it. And, and we are just clapping for, oh, wonderful Nobel Prize winner scientist and no it was the student who came up with the idea but of course he has since fired the student so no one knows about it it's like you know like the the Volkswagen bug do you guys know the story of who created the the Volkswagen bug it, it is attributed to Ferdinand Porsche uh, but it was not him who came up with the idea it was the uh, the PhD material of a Hungarian student and he just take his designs and, you know, uh, sold it under his name to Volkswagen. So thank you, Mr. Porsche. Yeah, you, you showed it how it's done. But but I really hope that uh, and, and I really have no doubt that, at all that the MBA came up with, with this design and, and really kudos for that. Finally, something truly original in the world of audio. But as, as original things go, everything has plus and minuses, everything has benefits and limitations. Here the limitation is that uh, to have like the really deep base, you would need lamellae this size, the size of this cabinet. And prob it would not be efficient enough, so, so you would need maybe like a dozen of these huge lamellae all, all over you around the room you would need to make your room into a giant lamella to for the base to work really and then you could have the floor 
or the ceiling compressed on top of you actually that would be a phenomenal idea so if i was mba then that's what i would offer to people to build the subwoofer in your room so that the walls themselves are the lamella and and that would just be absolutely fabulous i think that that would be truly truly something uh why i don't why i suspect that my friend was not impressed with them is probably this doubled up shape which i suspect they do so they can uh, reach higher sound pressure levels and because of this duplication i think there's just enough smearing of the frequencies that uh, uh, it, it it comes through a little different than than like a point source uh, loudspeaker but anyway i would love to hear these speakers and uh and i i really love to uh be positively uh impressed by them maybe i be i will be i really hope that's what i sincerely hope for uh, but edward i i hope that my description of how these uh, amazing speakers work was helpful and uh and I think that's it. <laughs> ah, thank you everyone for watching. I hope you had a good time. And um, have a wonderful day. Bye bye.